Hi friends and welcome. In today's video we're going to be drawing another six flowers but these are simple and easy to draw and also very elegant at the same time. And the best part is that these florals only take a couple of minutes to draw each so let's grab some drawing supplies and let's get started. Now our first flower is a daisy. I've done these before but they're a really good warm-up flower to start with and I just really like doing them. Now I'm going to draw one big circle first and this is where all of my petals are going to be within, for the most part. Now the petal shapes of a daisy are quite easy to draw. They're going to be tapered in the very center and they're kind of going to flare out and have a little bit of flutteriness at the end. So keep your line at the end very wiggly. Now to make this daisy more interesting, I'm going to have the petals nearest to us flip up a little bit. Now in order to do this, all you're going to need to concentrate on is making those petals nearest to us quite wide. Then we're going to go in and create a line on top of it to create that flip. Now for all of our flowers today, I'm going to be going over them with fine liners and normally I use an 05 or an 03 nib and then for the details I usually switch over to an 01 or even a 003. Now as I go in with my fine liners, remember that it can be helpful to have quite a loose hand when we're doing florals. Those little bumps and wiggles can be a very good thing for our drawings and give it a lot of life and interest. Now if you're doing this in pencil, you can of course erase any mistakes you might have, but because I'm using fine liners, I can't exactly go in and erase any mistakes I might make, but not to worry because we're going to go in and add some details later on, but if we're strategic, we can go and hide them in the detail lines. And if it doesn't work out how we envisioned it in our heads, that's okay too because this is just play and to have fun and experiment and I don't know about you but for me doing art is all about just relaxing and turning off my brain. I don't get a lot of time for myself, I'm a busy mom, so this is just my sacred time for me to relax and I'm not going to let a little imperfection in my drawing ruin that good time for myself. But back to the drawing. Now I've got the center here that I've been working on and I'm using a technique called stippling. I've got a couple of different shading techniques that I go over in detail um, in another video and I'll link it here but stippling is really good for creating some light shadow so that's what I'm going to do for the center here so I'm going to go in here with a very fine fine liner um, so that's an 01 or a 003 and I'm going to create some depth in our flower by creating some lines near the center of the flower so when I create some darkness there, it indicates that there's some depth in that middle part. And I'm going to go to the top part of the flower as well and just create some very small little lines, even dotted lines. And these lines are going to indicate some sort of little fold in the top part of the flower or a bend or some sort of movement. And it really helps create some realism for our flowers as well. And I'm just going to put a little bit of darkness on one side of the stem, which would be the shadowed side. Then I'm going to go into the stem and create some darkness at the very top part of the stem, which would indicate um, some shadow from the flower. And I'll just do a couple more finishing touches here and this daisy is done. Now onto our second flower, we are going to do bluebells. These are going to be a very simplified version, almost a little doodle but they're very sweet to draw. Now, as the name indicates, we are going to be drawing little bells. They have a couple of different petals and they kind of point out. So we're going to recreate that here. So once you've made a gently bending stem, you're going to want to create a couple little branches and these branches will all have one or two blue bells attached to them. Now I've created more blue bells on the one side where it's hanging. So the weight would be bringing that side down. And we're not going to create too much detail in the actual bluebell flower itself, but it's more an altogether shape we're going for. Now once you're happy with that shape, we're going to add two different leaves and they're going to be in a kind of pointed teardrop shape. And these will frame out our bluebells really nicely. Now that I'm happy with my sketch, I'm going to go in with my fineliners and finish everything up. 
And again, I'm not going to really worry about too many details in this drawing, it's more about the shape, but what I am going to focus on is for each one of the bluebells, they kind of have three visible points to them. So I'm just going to worry about those, the ends will be kind of pointy and they'll flare out a little bit, and that's most of the detail that I'm going to add. So once I'm happy with that, I'm going to work on those leaves that are going to frame out the bluebells. And the only details I'm going to do with these leaves are put a couple of lines down at the base and a couple of lines at the top. Now if you need help with any of your leaves, I do have an extra video on that and it's all about different shapes and the details you can add to them, so I'll link that here. But I'm just going to add a couple more little details onto my bluebells by just adding a little bit of shading and my bluebells are done. Now the next flower we're going to be doing is the cone flower, also called echinacea, and it's one of my new favorite flowers to draw. So what you're going to draw first is that very large central part of the flower, and on a cone flower it's actually called the disc. And with the cone flower, there's quite a lot of visible petal showing in the middle of the flower, and as you look kind of away from the cone flower, the petals start to really thin out and lose their visibility. So we're going to keep everything very thin near the very top edges of this flower and our petals can be just kind of a normal shape near the middle and bottom part. And these petals also have a little bit of daisy-like qualities, I guess, where there's some fluttery folds at the very end of the petals. So whatever you're using for this project, whether it be fine liners or pencils or watercolors, whatever, just make sure you're going over the petals first and you're going to leave the central disc alone for now. It has a couple of details that we're going to do more close up in a bit. So take your time getting the shape that you want right and then we're going to go focus in on this disc part which is my favorite part. And don't forget to include just a simple little stem down at the bottom. Now on for the disc part. So the coneflower has these little tiny florets, maybe of what they're called, and they're these tiny little spiky things. But in between the little spiky bits, we can add in some soft shadow by using some stippling. So I'm going to imagine that my light source, the sun, is coming from the right hand side and shining down. So the left hand side of my flower will have some shadow to it. So I'm going to have a curved shadow on the disc by creating a lot of darkness and kind of a swooping up line that will indicate that this disc is round and that there is some shadow here. Now moving on to the details in the petals, coneflowers often have these two kind of folds on each petal. So I'm just going to draw some first lines here and I'm going to try and get a little bit of detail in there with some very light hatching. So for me, I'm probably going to be using an 01 or a 003 nib fine liner, um, but you can also do this with a very sharp pencil or a very fine watercolor brush. And for the very bottom parts of the petals, I'm also going to be making a couple little lines on those little folds and bumps that I did. And that would again help indicate that there are some folds in the petals. And I'm also going to have some darkness on those petals that are kind of hiding underneath the others. And I'm just going to do this by doing a lot of hatching and cross hatching to create that darkness. Now the flower itself would also be casting a shadow onto the underside of that stem, so I'm going to create some darkness under there, and I'm also going to create a little bit of darkness on the left hand side, where again the shadow would naturally be. And that pretty much sums up our cone flower. Now moving on to our sunflower. Sunflowers are a lot of fun to draw, and to keep everything simple today, we're going to be drawing our sunflower like we are looking at it straight on. So we're going to start that by drawing one big circle, then we're going to draw a medium circle in the middle and an even smaller one in the center of that. Now because we're keeping our sunflowers simple today, I want you to think of it almost as a clock. So I'm going to start making my petals at 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock. And the petals are going to be in an elongated oval shape with a point at the end. Once those petals are created, I'm going to go into the white space and create some more petals. And I'm going to keep all of these petals roughly the same size. 
And once you're happy with the amount of petals on your sunflower, you can go in and add some leaves. I'm adding two on mine, and they're almost kind of in a heart shape at the base, and then they come to a point at the end. And once you're happy with your sketch, go and grab your fine liners, and we're gonna go over the next step. Now as you're going over your sunflower, try to make sure that your petal does not connect at the very center. For what we need to do in the center, it actually looks best when it's not a solid line. So let me go and speed this part up and we'll get to the next part. Okay, now for the center of this flower, we're going to be using some stippling again because it creates a nice texture in the middle and it also is a nice way to create some soft shadow. And for this flower, we're going to be thinking that the sun is coming from the left, so that's going to throw all of the shadows on this flower to the right hand side. So I'm going to create a lot of darkness on the right hand side where I'm doing the stippling and I'm going to try and make everything very rounded in its appearance. And now I'm going to move on to the details of the sunflower. So I'm going to work at the very base of each petal and I'm going to do a little bit of hatching on each petal. The petals that we created in the 12 o'clock, 3, 6, and 9 clock setting are going to be the lightest ones. So we're going to work on having a lot of shadow at the very base of the petal, but we're going to keep them the lightest. The petals that are behind these ones are going to have a lot more darkness. So take your time and work in layers for this and create darkness as you go little by little by building that up until you feel like it's just right. Now I'm also going to create some darkness on the stem as well. So I'll create quite a bit directly underneath the flower and then I'll have a little bit of shading on the left, sorry, the right hand side of the stem. And once that's done, I'm going to add a little bit of veining on these sunflower's leaves just to go and give it a little bit of detail. And once all of that's complete, you are finished. Now the second to last flower is the hyacinth flower. I find this one kind of similar to draw to a hydrangea because there are so many little blossoms on this one, but we're going to simplify it for today. So what I do to start off is I create this rounded oval and that's going to be the main bunch of flowers. To have this little drawing feel complete, I've added three leaves that kind of frame out this bunch of flowers. So we're going to add those in and then we'll start working on those little blossoms within our flower. Now for the hyacinth, they have these blossoms that have different directions. The ones at the bottom are gonna flare out more to the side and then they start to kind of go upward as you can see my arrow is pointing in here. And for the actual blossom, if you look closely, there's kind of three main petals and then there's three behind it. Now I'm not gonna add countless blossoms because it can be a bit overwhelming and get really muddy and messy, but we're going to do a couple of feature blossoms. Now I'm gonna jump into my fine liner here so you can see more of these fine details, but I'm just adding in some of those blossoms and they don't need to be evenly spaced, they can be all over the place. Now once you've drawn some of those blossoms here and there, you'll be left with some white space and it looks kind of awkward, but we're not going to fill it with endless blossoms. There is a little trick that I have for you. And we're going to create an illusion that there are more flowers than there actually are by adding in a couple of little V's or U's into the white space of that flower. And this allows our brains to think that there are these extra petals coming out of the bunch of flowers without actually having to draw all of them. Now I jumped ahead a little bit, but hyacinths actually have a couple of blossoms usually poking up at the top. So if you'd like to add those as well to yours, all you have to do is create a little stem and we're going to create almost a bluebell type of flower again. But these ones this time, instead of pointing down, are going to be pointing up towards the sun. And I usually create three or four of them and I think that that looks quite nice. And the foliage details on the hyacinth are quite easy. I'm just going to create a couple of contour lines at the bottom of each leaf and create some darkness on the inside of some of those leaves as well. 
And I'm also going to be imagining that the sun is shining down from the left again. So I'm going to create a lot of shadow on the right hand side of the flower. And for the last step of the hyacinth flower, I am going to create the smallest, most vaguest details of these little flowers. These ones do not need to have a lot of detail. They're more of a rough shape that's going to fill in some more of that white negative space. So you're not looking for precise blossoms or any precise details here. It's just about shading in the rest of the hyacinth here in strategic locations so that it looks like this flower is covered in blossoms when really we've only created maybe like 10. So once you've loosely filled in all of that negative space, your hyacinth should be done. Now our very last flower today that we're going to be drawing is the lily. I find lilies very fun to draw and I also find that they're quite simple in their shape. So what we're going to do to start is create one large circle and in the middle of the circle we're going to draw a couple of lines which is where our stamen will be and this is going to be the very center of our flower. Now the lily's petals are quite long and they taper off at the end sometimes into a point. So what you're going to do to start is create three main petals and then eventually we'll do three other petals in the white spaces. Now lily petals can also kind of flop over, so I'm going to do two extra petals that are going to do that just to add some personality to my lily. And once you've drawn those three main petals, you're going to go and create those other three. And then we're going to go in with our fine liners and start working on the details. So once you have everything outlined, you're going to go back in and create one distinct line down each petal. This is really going to show the curve and the movement of each petal. And when you go in to outline the stamen, you can either leave them white and blank on the inside or you can do them black. I've gone in and made mine black just so they can stand out better on camera, but I kind of prefer them white to be honest. And for my lily, I'm just going to do a very simple stem and one simple leaf. I find that simple is better. And then I'm going to go in with my fine liner for some details. So I'm really going to have some contouring happen around the curvature of the petals. So for all of my little lines, they're all going to be slightly rounded so that it will also show that there is some curve to these petals as well. And I'm really going to work at the base of each petal and create a lot of darkness there because that will show the depth and the shadow of that middle part of the flower. And I'm going to add a couple more little lines at the end of each petal. And again, you can leave the stamen white or you can leave them black. I've just left them black here so it's kind of a higher contrast and you can see it better on the video. And lilies sometimes have these little dots around their petals so I'm going to add just a couple very small details with that. And after a couple more finishing touches, that should be it. So once the lily is done, we're going to move on to the stem and again I'm going to create a little bit of shadow underneath the flower and I'm also going to create some shadow on the right hand side of that stem. And as for the leaf, we're going to keep it really simple. I'm just going to do a couple of lines at the bottom of the leaf and a couple of lines at the top. This is not our main focal point, so we're going to keep it easy and simple. So voila, you have finished all of these wonderful flowers. Now comment below on which flower you would like to draw next. Maybe I can make a requested floral drawing video in the future. But for now, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up and you might also like this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.